Shadow Scholars, our next person in our biography um, choices this week is going to be Marcus Notch per Person. I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce that. Um, he is the creator of Minecraft. Minecraft creator. Okay, so let's learn about his life. Chapter one. Person's childhood hobbies, like playing with Lego bricks, influenced his career as an adult. A boy and his computer. Marcus Person has been having the same dream since he was a boy. In the dream, he's playing with friends in the woods near his childhood home. Marcus loses his way and begins to realize he is truly lost. Finally, he stumbles upon a path that leads him home. Parts of this dream have made their way into Minecraft, the unique and popular video game Marcus designed in 2009. The game includes Lego-like blocks that players use to build whatever they like. It has sold better than anyone, even person, ever expected. All right, let's see how it started. Early years. Marcus Al Alex Alexej Person was born in Stockholm, Sweden on June 1, 1979. His mother was a nurse. His father worked for the Swedish Railroad and loved tinkering with computers. Marcus grew up in Edsbyn, a small town in the Swedish countryside. This is Marcus's hometown of Edsbyn, Sweden. It had plenty of land and woods for him to explore. Wow, it's so very green, beautiful. He and his friends spent their summer playing in the woods. In winter, Marcus spent hours playing with Lego blocks. He built complex spaceships and cars only to tear them apart to create something new. When Marcus was seven, his father bought a Com Commodore 128, one of the best personal computers available at the time. Marcus and his father spent the whole evening reading through the manual and plugging in cables. The computer came with a few games, but Marcus was much more interested in the simple programming instructions included in the manual. When he typed in a code, he could make the computer do things like scroll text up or down on the screen. He also began typing code that was printed on the backs of video game magazines. Oh, interesting. Let's read the, the caption that goes with the picture. An ad for the Commodore 128 a popular computer in the 1980s that Marcus used, used to learn how to program. Wow, look at what that looks like. That's what computers used to look like. Okay, this looks like a quote by him. So it says Tech Talk, and it has his name at the bottom. That means that he said it. My sister would read the lines out to me, and I would tap them into the computer. After a while, I figured out that if you didn't type out exactly what they told you, then something different would happen when you finally ran the game. That sense of power is intoxicating. So like when you type code like you practiced in technology class with Ms. Curiel, if you, um, you know, if you don't type it exactly, then maybe something different will happen, right? Within a year, Marcus was writing his own computer programs for his simple text adventure games. In this type of game, players read along on the screen and type specific text to move through the story. At first, Marcus didn't know how to save what he had done, so each time he turned off the computer, his program was lost. But Marcus didn't care. He would just power it up and start all over again. That's perseverance. He's not giving up. He loved learning how to control the computer. The birth of a gamer. In 1986, Marcus and his family moved to Stockholm. Marcus had a hard time fitting in at his new school. Eventually, he made new friends who were as interested in computers as he was. Together, they played video games, including The Bard's Tale. They also played role-playing board games, creating their own fantasy worlds, complete with monsters, dragons, and elves. Marcus loved these games, and often led the group by inventing the stories and making challenges for the other players. When Marcus was 12, his parents divorced and his father moved away. Marcus took his mind off these troubles by playing video games and programming. Sometimes Marcus was so focused on programming that he didn't want to go to school. He would tell his mother that he didn't feel well and then spend the entire day in front of the computer. I hope you guys don't do that. Although Marcus did very well in school, 
few classes interested him. At 14, Marcus already knew what he wanted, um, knew that he wanted a job creating video games. The one computer programming class at his high school was too easy. On the first day of class, Marcus sat down and programmed his own version of the computer game Pong, based on ping pong. His teacher saw his work and told him he didn't have to come back until the last day for the final test. Marcus easily earned an A in the class. Becoming a programmer. Person left high school in 1997 to take a job as a computer programmer, but not at a game company. He grew bored with the job and left after about six months. Soon after, a recession hit and jobs in the computer industry became much harder to find. He lived with his mother, created his own games, and entered computer game programming competitions. He wasn't making any money, but he was getting better at writing code. His mother encouraged him to take programming classes to get him out of the house. He took a class in a programming language called C++. Person worked for a couple of years at a game distributor, so that means they like sold games, called Game Federation. Then in 2004, he landed his dream job. He was hired as a programmer at the popular video game company, Midas Player, later called King.com. Person was one of the first programmers they hired. Tech Talk. What separated Marcus from other developers at King was he had a deep knowledge about games. Marcus had a little bit of everything in him. He's more like a one-man show. He couldn't believe he was finally working at a video game pro as a video game programmer. His first challenge was to learn the programming language ActionScript. He picked it up quickly and impressed his coworkers with his skills. Bending the rules. Before long, Person was teaching new employees how to write code for games. One of the employees was Jacob Porcer, and the two quickly became friends. Porcer and Person shared a passion for video games. They also both loved playing the card game Magic, The Gathering. Porcer's dream was to develop a video game based on Magic. He and Person spent lunch hours and time after work talking about how they might develop it. Meanwhile, Person was busy working on his own new games in his free time. But Midas Player had rules against employees developing their own games. After posting his latest game on the company network and inviting coworkers to try it, Person was fired because he was breaking the rules of the company. Person wasn't too upset about having to leave Midas Player. However, he had learned a lot in the four years he worked there, and he had developed more than 25 games. But he was ready to move on. More than anything, Person wanted to be in charge of his own games. He wanted to have the freedom to create interesting games he liked instead of worrying about how games would sell. Person quickly found a new job at J Album, an online personal photo album site. He became friends with business executive at the company, Carl Manna. Because the company was not in the business of creating video games, Person was free to develop his games on his own time. And that's just what he did. Okay, here comes his hit game, Minecraft Mania. On a quiet weekend in May 2009, Person sat down at his home computer and wrote the code for a game he had been thinking about for a while. When he was done, the game didn't quite look finished, but he liked it that way. In fact, he left parts of the game unfinished so players could have a role in how the game developed. Person's new game, called Minecraft, provided a digital world where players are free to explore the landscape. Most players decided to settle down and begin building with a supply of bricks that they can use to create whatever they like. They mine for resources like gold, wool, or wood. The only real object of the game is to finish building a secure shelter before nightfall, when monsters and zombies come to attack. Players are also free to work in creative mode, where monsters don't exist. Minecraft's simple world and the freedom for players to explore made it an instant hit. Okay. An instant success. On May 17, 2009, Person released Minecraft online through TIG Source, a site for game players and creators. Almost immediately, he was selling about 400 downloads of the game per day at a price of $6 each. In the first year, Minecraft sold about 20,000 downloads, 
By the end of 2010, a person was selling that many downloads each day. He was amazed by the game's instant success. The game was selling like crazy, and it wasn't even finished. On TGI Source, players gave ideas and feedback about the game. Every Friday, person read the player comments as he updated the game with new features. By inviting players to have a say in the shaping of Minecraft, person earned the respect and loyalty of millions of fans. So he was very good at revising. He took people's advice and then changed it in a way that would make them like it better. As Minecraft grew in popularity, fans began to gather each year for a co convention called MineCon. There's one more page we'll read. In 2010, Person decided to adopt the name Notch when he was online. Notch was the name he always used in TGI Source, and he decided to use it whenever he communicated with fans and players. Using a different name made the usually shy person more comfortable voicing his opinions on video games. Today, most fans know Person as Notch. The popularity of Minecraft made Person a household name among gamers. So you might already know him, but if you would like, you can tell me what you know about him by writing an informative paragraph this week if he is your choice.